All right, so my name is Kevin Haas. I'm an engineer on the TensorFlow Extended team, and I'm here to talk about TensorFlow Extended and Kubeflow. So um, just a quick show of hands. How many actually saw the TensorFlow Dev Summit last week? All right, a few people. How many saw Pavel's slide on Kubeflow pipelines earlier today? All right, more people, and you're still awake. So some of these slides will look very similar to both last week and um, Pavel's slides we both stolen from the same PM. So um, TFX is a series of ML um, pipelines and a platform that we've been using at Google for about 10 years in one form or another. It's scalable. It does everything from a single experimental pipeline that you're playing with and still trying to build a model all the way up to production scale, Google scale pipelines we use for everything from ads to YouTube. And it's been battle hardened by the many creative ways that Googlers can do it wrong. And we've been in the process of open sourcing a lot of this, and we're here just to provide some updates. So as I mentioned, um, we exist in many places in Google. The last year, we open sourced a series of libraries as part of TFX. These are low-level libraries that you would be able to plug into your own ML systems. Unfortunately, or fortunately or unfortunately, you had to know a lot about what was happening on the internals because we didn't give you a full end-to-end -end pipeline. We promised one, but we didn't give one. And for those of you who attended the Dev Summit last week, we actually did announce and share our full end -end pipeline up on GitHub. It's there as part of tensorflow.org slash TFX. And what you'll see, the difference between the four libraries we shared and now is we have a pipeline configuration where you can go ahead and define your full pipeline using a Python DSL. We have the ability to run ML metadata where we could actually track all your artifacts that are emitted by all these pipelines. We have a series of managed pipelines. For example, this runs in Kubeflow pipelines. And then on top of that, we do have a, this concept of a component. So no longer do you have to figure out how to plug in your ML libraries. We actually can generate a whole ML pipeline end to end. So this is what it looks like inside the box, roughly. Um, all pipelines do vary. And each of these are based on the libraries that we shared last year. But it now has the full end-to-end -end series of we manage artifacts, we manage retries, we manage the components. We allow you to inject your transforms and your estimator code into this. And we will run on everything, again, from a single machine all the way up to via Kubeflow pipelines, all the way up to Kubernetes and CloudML. So you'll notice three things in here. That the very top level is going to be a config. Um, I'll show examples of that. Then the next example is these components. All the components vary. But each one of these is, has a very particular piece, and we do chain them together. So in the sense that when you're working in example gens, what you expect on the input is maybe BigQuery or a giant CSV file. and the output, we are going to generate examples in the form of TF records. And all of these are chained together and then type checked, so you don't accidentally send your examples directly to Pusher and try to push it as a model. I'm going to skip that. Um, and then what we have here, so we have the config, which I will cover in the next slide. We also have this idea of a component, and a component is the thing that does the real work. And the thing that does the real work is kind of broke up into three layers. We have the idea of a driver, and the driver is responsible for it. Do I actually need to do work? If you have a cached artifact, then you don't need to do work. You don't need to spend the time or resources. You can kind of reuse that artifact. If you have complicated versioning, then we can provide a plugin where you can apply your complicated versioning and say, well, the artifact's stale, but it's still current enough where I don't want to recompute everything if it's only four hours changed in a 28-day slice. So all this goes into something called a driver. The executor is the piece that does the real work. And what we're doing for TFX is taking all of our internal executors and open sourcing these as well. So long term, what you'll be able to do is everything that we have available internally, you'll be able to consume as part of TFX. We've actually shared this with Transform already. And to give you an idea, the, the full TFX open source code is about 6,000 lines and transforms 1,000 lines. And transform is going to be trainers, going to be another couple thousand. So over time, the orchestration is a small part of your pipeline, and it's the ex these executors that really do the heavy lifting for your component. And finally, we integ integrate with ML metadata. And this is what records the artifacts, what records the runs, what records the hyperparameter tuning, and gives you some advantages that Pavel mentioned in his talk. So this is an example, a snippet of an example of our pipeline. And what you'll see here is everything's defined in Python, and everything really refers to previous components that were done. So you don't have to figure out how to stitch everything together other than I want to build a trainer. If you're just focusing on a trainer and possibly some transforms, you just have to build the trainer part, and then you would extend your pipeline as you see fit, or maybe drop out pieces as you see fit. 
So you could take a production pipeline and drop out the pieces you don't want and focus just on the trainer. You could start with the trainer and then build out all the way to the point where you're querying um, BigQuery in order to get your data and pushing all the way to uh, your whatever you're using for serving, like TFS serving. So Python-based, we use ML metadata for metadata. We use ML metadata for artifact management. Again, Coop, um, Pavel talked about this earlier. <clears throat> we don't just manage tasks, we also manage data. So because of this, we have the concept of this is the data that's generated from the pipeline, and this is the data that's been consumed by the pipeline. And an example of this is here with model validator. You'll see not only are we just using the current model that's been trained out of trainer, but we're also saying going back to ML metadata and say, get me the last model. Let's do an A-B test of these two models before we decide whether to push it. And obvious cases where you could use this is warm starting with a trainer, where you do want to get the previous model, or you want to be able to use model validator where you want to be able to do the same. So a lot of this is because we're relying on ML metadata under the behind the scenes. So what can we do? This looks, slide looks very similar to Pavel's. We have we manage artifacts, we manage types, we manage properties. We use this across all of TFX internally as well as externally. And then we can get lineage tracking. We can be able to compare different models across runs. We can be able to warm start with these models. And then if you want to just iterate on a very particular part of your pipeline, you can retry just that pipeline, all without having to run your whole pipeline end to end. So where we are today. Um, as of last week, we just announced TFX 0.12. It runs on Python 2.7. For those of you who want to use Python 3, I'm sorry, it's coming soon. Um, sorry. Um, we're also running with um, Kubeflow, so you'll be able to start playing with the Kubeflow pipelines. In order to see this, like, one of the amazing things is you go to tensorflow.org slash TFX, and in the guides you'll actually see a link on how to go ahead and run this inside Kubeflow. Then, obviously, we've shared a lot of our components and libraries as well, as well as some examples. Our example actually will run on everything from a single machine all the way to Kubeflow, and it's about 10 characters to change it from running on your machine all the way to running inside Kubeflow. And what's coming in the, the next version, which is 013, it's right around the corner. This is where you'll get the Python 3 support. Uh, we're blocked by, we have a couple issues internally to get some of our components supporting Python 3. When we fix that, Python 3 will be out. We're also gonna be supporting TF 2.0 and a couple other features coming out here as well. And then you'll see here, this is an example of it running inside Kubeflow pipelines. And whoops, I probably should have changed that header. Um, where, where we can um, use help. So one of the big areas is right now we just have it tested on Kubeflow pipelines on GCP. We'd love to see this running on AWS on Azure. So if you're so inclined, please try this on other clouds. Send us PRs on whether or not it works. And then the second one is right now we're very tied to Beam and then Flink. So if somebody has a Python Beam runner for Spark, let me know because we are desperately looking for one. And then any other help we'll take. So that's it for TFX on Kubeflow. And thanks for your time.